Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, Solidity programming language. I'm just going to mention a few points that can help you when you write your contract, but there are, of course, deep functionalities in the Solidity programming language, which I put reference to, YouTube videos and stuff like that. Just uh, make sure to see those to get the big advantage from the Solidity programming language to write your contracts. So uh, Solidity is a uh, programming language is an, an object oriented oriented a high level language for implementing smart contracts uh, it's influenced the if you see the language and if you study it it's pretty much similar with javascript python you see the similarity functionalities like solidity uh, like them so it is influenced by python c and javascript also c plus plus and uh, I think you will find it much easier to understand the language considering you already have experience in this language, Python, JavaScript. So uh, it acts as a tool for creating machine level code, compiling it on Ethereum, EVM virtual machine. Uh, it allows inheritance libraries, just these functionalities you see in, in JavaScript. You will also find those functionalities when you do solidity to create your smart contracts. So from this Solidity programming language, we're going to talk about uh, around 10 or points uh, that are helpful when you create your smart contract. The first one would be enum. Uh, this functionality in smart contract gives you uh, to keep track of a list of things. Uh, for example, if you have a state or uh, for your application that you want to give like a really good stuff just an example maybe you want to give a state for some kind of method unactive and inactive status for something you can use enum enum just gives uh use some kind of object to create a state like this and you have to declare the enum state name by another it's just how you create uh how you initialize your state like this and you can just simply fetch the state uh, value by the name that you put here. State to ready will read this one. Uh, if you want to change the state variable to go, the enum value now have uh, the value of quotes, which is number two. So enum actually uh, gives these positions with a number. So ready is at zero, start is at one, go is at two, look like an R index. So when you write, uh, when uh, if, you, if I, print the state in what place it is found, it will direct you now if you activate, uh, if you call this function, it will uh, show you the number two, where the go file position is found, like an index. So to uh, see this, you can use this functionality of solidity to just uh, give your some state or status you want to keep on your project by this method. Uh, we will see also this on Remix. Just let's just move to the other part, and we'll see the example running it on Remix. The other would be struct. A uh, struct has the same functionality like an object in JavaScript. Uh, you just create an object for for some variable, and uh, those uh, those objects, the uh, variables inside the object are the representation of that object name, right? Like that, the struct will have a name, and under that name. This ha there are these attributes. So see, whatever the person it has a name and it's a wallet. So this is like an object in Solidity. So by this time, by this kind of function, you can call this struct object and add new data on that object. And if you want to also get that particular object by, to fetch the data, you can use uh, this kind of ways to read the data. So again, we'll see this in example on Remix, which will be privileged just by when you choose you know, the point of struct is just creating you an object for anything uh, that you want. The other would be events. Uh, like you already know, events are just will uh, make sure they trigger something where uh, some changes happen on your smart contract. Uh, you can use events for that purpose. The same thing, you just uh, declare the event like this. And when you add, uh, for example, I want to create an event when I add uh, a new person or any object on the struct uh, variable on the struct object. So when I did that, I emit first, you uh, initialize the event like this. 
and you have to emit it for the for the event to be called. So mostly these events, you will see them on the query logs of the blockchain. So uh, that needs another algorithm, but or another uh, kind of skill. But when you uh, drive or fetch the query logs from the blockchain, you will find the event that has been done on your contract. But you just have to mention it. It's uh, it's an important thing uh, in every programming language. An event, uh, same thing here too. Uh, the other main point that you have to know what variables and function, how are they declared on Solidity? So variables in Solidity is stored in either storage or memory. Variables, which means the first the declaration, this one, for example, is a variable. This one, I'm, I'm declaring a state variable for the in a, uh, for the in a part of the Solidity functionality. So I'm just here, I'm giving it a state or I'm declaring it a state on the blockchain. Like that, the states are either will be stored on the storage or memory. If they are stored on the storage, it means they are permanently stored on the blockchain. You can access them from the blockchain, they are permanently stored. They usually are named state variable. But if you saw these uh, variables that you declare as a memory, it will be temporary. For example, if you give a uh, def definition in a function when you execute it inside your function, those are called memory variables. You are uh, gives just, they exist only until the function runs. They're not permanent. They only exist when the function runs, after it's executed, they don't exist. So it's just like this. The difference is that the one that you will assign as a storage variable, will be permanently stored on the blockchain. In the memory one, usually are found on your function, the functions that you declare inside, the variables that you declare on your function, which are not permanently set. Just it just function until the function is executed. The other would be functions. Uh, functions, again, uh, you, there are two types of functions in Solidity. Either the functions that create transactions, uh, they have the power or they, you give them the access to change the state variable. So if you declare some state variable, and if you decide a function to change the state variable that's stored on the blockchain, those functions are called. As those functions are, we call them as some, they create transaction. When you create, when you change your state variable, you pay for a transaction in Gatsby. And that function who doesn't create any transaction, you just use them to see that state variable data as it is without changing it. So we uh, functions in Solidity are seen by two. There are functions who create transactions by changing their state variable and their function who doesn't make, a, who doesn't uh, just do any transaction. They just, uh, they, they don't choose the state variable that's stored on the blockchain permanently. So these are the two functions mainly found in Solidity. Uh, the other would be function modifiers. These are very important points to see, internal, external. These are like uh, the Python add decorators that you put to indicate different things like that. Uh, so that you have this modifier. So when you put internal in your function, that means that function is only exist inside the contract. It cannot be by outside users. If you put external, that function would be seen by other users. Uh, if you put on the owner, it indicates that that particular function will only be accessed by the contract owner, depending how you define on the owner. But uh, payable, if you, if you put payable, the payable keyword on your function, it means that function made some kind of transaction. Either it may be a transfer of money from one account to another, to another account. So when you create that kind of function, if you do not pay, uh, put this keyword payable, on the function, it will not work. So this just are modifiers to indicate the purpose of the function. Uh, and plus, depending on which modifier you, you will use, uh, sometimes you can find a way to reduce your gas fee. For example, this external uh, modifier, like I told you, it gives you, uh, if it gives a, when you put external on your function, it means every user outside that contract can access that particular function. Uh, there's also another modifier named public. 
fabric also have the same function like like external that they have a difference which we'll see on the code but uh, the way the blockchain understand these two has a difference when you read on research deep level the external one when you use the external one it increases the, your gasping uh, how for that question um, i will say it later but uh, i'm just telling you that the, depending on how which modifiers to use and uh, don't use uh, sometimes you might get the chance to increase your gasping when you are construct because that's what we want in decreasing a uh, gas fee is always uh, a good thing uh, the other thing i'm going to mention is global keywords there are global keywords when you write msg on your solidity contract uh, directly automatically you will find this default functions that you can access with the msg keyword and there's also uh, other fun um, automatically default functions you find when you play, when you write block do it and you, you get different functionalities to access by default uh, they give you a data from the blockchain so we also did this on the remix which will be clean for you again and the other will be visibility and behavior uh, for visibility which means how you define your function to be visible either you can make it a private function which not, cannot be seen by anyone uh, other than the uh, contract owner or you can make sure everyone sees your function everywhere or you can make your function internal just you know, that will be only accessed by the contract itself not anyone any anywhere else so it just gives you different kind of visibility for your function or the method that you can wrote the other would be behavior the function behavior so depending on these three keywords your function can have different behaviors either you can put a view pure and payable behavior on your function so if you put a view keyword in your function it means uh, every function can only call other pure functions which means other function who also contain pure uh, and view can be accessed by another view function so if you have a view function you can that function can call another view or pure function or and view function do not modify state variable so if you put a view keyword on your function you cannot uh, change your state variable to anywhere it, it, it won't allow you it will throw an error saying either change it to pure function if you want to uh, modify your state variable so this is the opposite of view uh, pure only call another pure function having if you have a pure function you cannot call another view function it only has to be a pure function it's just solidity room and the other is uh, using So this one, uh, the view function that does not modify state but can read a state variable. Pew doesn't modify or read pure uh, state variable. This is their main difference. So again, we'll see it on example how you put these keywords on your function. Um, this is the point that I tried to make before, public and external. They have the same functionality. When you put this keyword on your function, it makes your function be accessible by any user who are accessing your contract, uh, but they have a difference. So the first thing, the one uh, difference is when a function is declared as a public, a getter function, sorry, this one, for example. Function declared as public can be accessed from both within contract and externally, which means, uh, for example, if I have a function name add person, and I put on that add person function the keyword public. And if I have another function name, I don't know, maybe view a person, and I decided to access my view function on my add person function. And if I have a public uh, keyword on both, I can access it within my contract. Uh, like I told you, other users can also access those functions. But if I want to access one function, from another function, if they have public both, I can do that. But if the other function has a name external, and I want to access that function with the external keyword in my uh, other function, I cannot do that. External only works for outside users. You cannot access a function that is you declare as, as external within your own contract functions. It's only for the outside. 
So that's one of the reasons why uh, the blockchain doesn't and so this is the external visibility modifier has a lower gas fee compared to the public visibility modifier for function costs due to the way they are handled by, by the EVM. So the primary reason for this gas fee change by when you use external and public is the primary reason is associated with the external function is that the key they are not allowed to modify the contrastive variable, the external ones directly, which this restriction allows the AVM to optimize the execution of external functions. So when you use external function, the AVM doesn't execute much because the external function doesn't have the option of access to change the state variable, which will increase your gas peak when you use external function. But if you use public, public has that access to change the external variable, the state variable. Like I told you, state variables are stored permanently on the blockchain. Uh, and storage in the blockchain is expensive. It does require uh, some kind of ether money to do that. So if there's a function that doesn't do that, if it means the gas fee is low. And if there's a function that uh, has the access to change the state variable, which means there would be a higher fee, a higher gas fee. So uh, if you decide to be a Web3 developer, uh, this is part of your job to identify which meters you should use to limit your gas fee. So the more the gas fee is, which means the more would be users have to spend a lot of money to just use your application. So as much as uh, it can, most developers in Web3 try to minimize these gas fees. Mm, and right, even loops on uh, on the JavaScript, there are loops, right? We use in Python, we use loops. Using loops in Solidity, you can use them, it's an option, but you have to know there will be um, a gas fee because loops will be executed more often, which cause the EVM to do more competition or con execution for looping those data. So uh, there will be a gas fee. These are just facts that you have to deal with when you're dealing with blockchain technology as a web series developer. And the reference, I have put videos to give you full course on Solidity. Just give it three, four hours and you will get it uh, quite easily. Uh, let's just see the remix parts about every point that we talked about here. Okay, first, let's start. Uh, remix is an editor for the Ethereum blockchain where it gives you uh, false accounts with values 100, 100 either. So you can test your contract as much as you can without worrying about testing it faucet money or main it money, uh, which is great. So mostly uh, when I create contract, I make sure everything works on the Linux before I deploy it on the hard drive or Trevor or the Bob Brown uh, framework. Uh, what, what is there is to know about the remix, they have this file on the file part. You can create a new this under the contract folder. You can create uh, a new file and start just uh, creating your smart writing your smart contract here on the Solidity. Uh, for me, it's not letting create. Uh, I'm just gonna recommend you to test it on yourself. Maybe it, it used to work. I think we have more functionality on there. Remix uh, editor, but it might work for you guys. It, it used to work. So if I say Taylor, for example, ARC20, you can do so. Just when you create a solidity file, you have to put it so uh, for the file. It's not creating it, but it used to create. Uh, it doesn't matter. Just we these are default solidity files that are found when you open your Ethereum um, Remix editor. So you just click one of them and remove the default code that was there and just uh, create your smart contract on there. If it tries, to, if you create a new file for you, great. Uh, so after creating your uh, file, I'm just gonna use this palette.solidity to state the record. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna show you here is would be this part, Solidity compiler. So if you see here, I the first, these two parts, should be all included on your remix. This one, like uh, if you create, when you create edit 
a GitHub repo, you see that you give it a license, right? Either MIT or something like that, just to show you are the owner. Uh, like that, uh, this is just a comment remix, usually one set. And if I remove it, usually it throws an error. Let's just see. It. No, it's really, it wants some kind of identifier to see if this particular uh, solidity code you're writing, you're writing, you, if you have a right to that. So if I put MIT, or if you put any like this MIT on any solidity code, it means it can be accessed by anyone. It just gives you approval to use a solidity uh, code of someone else or yourself. So uh, I'm just giving it like, like this. It will just understand it. It is uh, all right to use this solidity code. It's just like an assurance for your ownership. So after you put like this, uh, if you, like I told you, we are on such solidity compiler option. This solidity compiler option, what it's doing is it will compile your solidity. So if there is any, Type, uh, type error, syntax error, and everything. If you throw the error here, and you will, you can just make sure you adjust your error based on the error message you got. So, uh, and the other thing also I have to mention here would be, if you see it here, there are different compiler options, which these are different Solidity versions that are already been created so far. Now, uh, Solidity is on the 0 0.8 version error right now. So if you if your compiler, uh, if your version is not similar with a compiler, you also might find an error. So come here and make sure uh, you have put uh, the compiler similar with this one. Just make sure at least on the same version on the point eight. So for example, if I put 0 0.64 compiler and try to compile a solution with version like this, it will not be success. Okay, let's just wait for the compiler to finish. We'll just not waste time. I'm gonna go back to 0 0.8. My internet is not good, but uh, it, it won't work for you if the versions are different with the compiler. When you try to compile it, it will throw a incompatibility error. Is compiled. Uh, Magnus, you can ask. If we got an incompatible uh, version, should we change manually the version of the solidity? Either you can, yes, you can do that. Either you can change the solidity code version or this one, but. Uh, the thing is, when you change some of the Solidity versions, have new functionalities in them that would not that doesn't exist on 0 0.6 or 0 0.5 version Solidity. So if you are using those functions on your uh, smart contract, again, uh, correcting it with 0 0.5 here, for example, might not access those functionalities you have here. So you have to be also make sure the function you use also is compatible with 0 0.5. Um, for example, I'm using 0 0.5. It doesn't throw any error. It means the codes that I used here are compatible. That's okay. But there are new functionalities that are existed in the latest versions. So if you want to use that, uh, make sure you also use the latest version of the in your code. Okay, the compiling is uh, passed, which means I can deploy this uh, particular uh, so the file. So for deployment, you will find below the compiler a deployer transaction. Uh, use account that you want to deploy the contract with. I'm just going to use the first one. Here again, uh, the environment. If you can see here, I'm just using the Remix virtual machine for deploying the contract. But you have different kind of also environments to deploy your contract. You have the Cipolia testnet network. The Gorily, this is just the main network. Uh, these are different, just uh, go with the default. And if you decide to also uh, deploy this function with your MetaMask wallet, you can use the inject provider. So 
So if I use Angel Provider, I don't have the extension in this Chrome, uh, my browser, but if you have a Chrome in an account, uh, and a, of course you have, the account should have a money for the deployment, need a transaction money. If you use the image provider, when you click deploy, your MetaMask will pop up and ask you to confirm the transaction. Now we're just gonna use the default one, which means it will be deployed inside the remix. So let's just deploy the value, the contract. So when you deploy a contract, all the functions will be displayed here on remix. So you can test your uh, if everything is working as you want so basically this is a for the example i put it on the slide which uh, uh, states uh you know variable values that you want to use on your, on your contract so let's just see here constructor the thing i, I forgot the constructor function i think you already know it on i think it's found in c plus plus also so constructor there are places when you run your function it will run once so whatever you put it here, when you deploy your uh, smart contract, it will also be run or deployed. Uh, I mean, it will be executed automatically, only once. So whatever is in there, when I deploy the contract, the first thing the solidity will run will be the, the whatever you put in your construct uh, function. So with that, say, with that being said, on the construct, the execution that I want to make sure is that, I want to be the enum state under the ready uh, value. So the current state variable, state variable of the state enum is under ready. So if I put, for example, here to go, and if I deploy it again, the state variable will get the index value of the go. Now, so I hope that's clear. Let's just go it back. I have to reprint it again if I want to see the goal, but that's not necessary. So currently the state variable is under the which means at ready. As I told you, it will count the enum values where how much you put it by a number. A zero, which means you can understand that it's as ready. So the activator function will change the state variable. I'm trying to change here the state from ready to go, which means from zero to two. So if I click the activator function and identify the state variable, you can see now the state, the state is found in the go. This is the functionality of inner. When you have this kind of status checkers, it can be useful. This is one of the examples I want to show you. Now let's move on to the next example that we have seen that is on the struct. Again, let's make sure first we compile it to see if it is working. Now let's just deploy it. Uh, like I told you before, struct is uh, had the purpose of objects that you already know on Python and JavaScript. Uh, so I'm just defining this object here like this. The first function and this uh, I'm just giving it. This is I'm declaring a state variable. I'm, I'm giving it. There's a people name state variable, which contains this person uh, struct as an array, which means every value you're gonna put on the person struct on the person struct will be pu pushed on an array variable. So now let's just add a person. So first, if you see. People, people is uh, right now the state variable people is indicating an array value. So you have to have some index to access uh, this array. So if I click p uh, zero, it will throw an error because there is no any index zero right now. It's an empty. So we have to add some kind of data to the array first. While it address the owner of this person, let's just. Uh, choose some another address from here and go back to the first one. Struct, now it passed here. So if I go now to the people with the zero index, the first variable will be the one that I just put it here. And if I also want to view the same thing with a function like this, I can also find it like so. It's just giving it a condition to display the array uh, variable I just assigned here. So this is the purpose of struct. 
since we don't have the normal way to database structure in block to blockchain, this is how we organize our data on uh, on the blockchain. So if you have, for example, Web2, you have this person table, and maybe you have some other table, you can connect them with foreign key and primary key and just access it like that. That option, does, do you don't have that kind of option on Solidity, and you have to use this kind of functionalities to make a connection by one another. So, uh, this is especially, we will see the mapping functionality, which gives you the same kind of uh, functionality as a primary key or foreign key gives you in a normal way to database. We will see later that one. So I'm just going to move this one also, considering you have you are understand the purpose of struct. If you have any questions, please make sure you interrupt me. Now let's just go to uh, the modifiers. I want to show you this modifier also. First. Can I see all the modifiers you mentioned before in this contract? We have the only owner modifier here. Uh, we're going to see the payable, the external, internal. Uh, first, let's just compile this one. So if you noticed here, let's just uh, contract. If you see it here, you can see it's 0, 8, B. This is an address for your contract. So when you deploy your contract, you will, by default, get a unique address, a, a public address for your contract. So if I want to access this contract, I, I have to use this public address. This is a public address for your contract. And when you deploy it on hard hard and the others also, you have this kind, you will give through uh, a public address for that contract only. So this particular address is the owner address. If I'm the admin, this is my address. But this is different from the contract public address. Okay, now uh, we're going to see this one. Haptamu, go ahead. Okay. Uh, on uh, what environment uh, you deploy? Uh, I didn't understand it, how you deploy it, how you select the um, environment. I'm deploying on the Remix virtual machine environment, this Remix VM, Shanghai. Uh, it just deployed it on their, on the Remix environment. Once I just close the Remix, it will, the all, everything will also be lost. It's temporary virtual machine. Uh, but you have the option also to uh, deploy it on your MetaMask wallet. Uh, probably that's the wallet that you're going to use also on this big project. So if you want to, for testing, it's not necessary. It's necessary to uh, lose your testing uh, money for uh, deploying a Remix contract. When you use hard hard in Brownie or whatever, you will use the MetaMask. We will, see, we will see it later on the afternoon. But uh, for your question, I'm using the virtual version of Remix to deploy this contract on Remix itself. It's not permanent, it's just a temporary for testing. Uh, is that clear, Hatam? Yeah, yeah, yes. So the first, uh, the things we're going to see in this particular contract will be, I'm just giving, uh, this is a keyword that I mentioned before here. Uh, these are default uh, values that you found, uh, that you can find on the blockchain. If you write MSG and tender, by default, it will, uh, get you automatically the, the address that deployed the contract. So message the sender means this address. Uh, what is uh, the other keyword that I mentioned before was the block right, the block is keyword. If I click those, it will give you different functionals that you get for free by default from the blockchain. For example, if one say, which block am I when I deploy this particular uh, the time that uh, when I deploy this uh, contract, I just click block time stuff, which means when you do some function or functionality, it will tell you the time of the block URL. 
So we say blockchain work in a set of blocks, right? So it will give you your blockchain timestamp when you decrease some kind of function or everything is just uh, for different purposes. These are just functions that you use by default. Uh, data that you get from your blockchain. And message a MSG and block give you this access to access some data that you may need. Especially message to sender, block time class. Usually use this and when you create the contract message uh, dot value. This will fetch the value whatever if you if your sender of which is the owner of the contract deployer uh, has set a value here whatever value you put here by accessing this message value you can access the value these are the global rewards that are found uh, so did you access blockchain ethereum blockchain data okay when we go back to the contract i'm here i'm modifying uh, an only owner modifier to give my only to make sure the message to center, which means the first one, whatever the address is that deploy the contract, is the owner to indicate that. First, I have to also declare what the owner variable here, I'm declaring a state variable like this. And here I'm modifying it by saying the owner is equal to with the message to center. Which is the sender again, it is the owner of the contract. And on the construct, when you deploy the contract, this is a one-time call. The construct is the first one that will be also executed. I'm indicating it here that the owner is equal to with the message to sender, which means the contract owner, the owner that deployed the contract is the owner. So if when after I declared this state variable, uh, if I want to limit the function here, for example, add person, I want to give this functionality access only for the admin. The admin only has the, the access to add a person on the struct object. So I have put the modifier name like this, only owner. When I put only owner, after I put the functionality, stuff like that, before the brace, you put this only owner. So uh, we'll see, uh, this is the purpose of only owner, the only owner modifier. Uh, the other thing, payable, I'm just saying here, uh, there's a transaction that's going to happen at person. Technically, there's no any transaction. I'm not transferring any money or everything. I'm just, I just put it for uh, an example. This is where you put the uh, keyword if there's a transaction that's going to be happen or a transfer from one account to another account in this function. Uh, for this particular function, it's not necessary to add it. The other modifier uh, we have seen could be the public. If you put a public, it means it can be accessed by anyone. Okay. So let's just test it here. Add person, right now it is uh, found on the contract deployer account. So it should be able to work this function to add uh, an object on the struct. So let's see this one, wallet address. Let's just pick some wallet address from here. So if I just click this transact, it will work because uh, the person who is making adding this person is the admin itself, the only owner. So list it out. If it's not, what, what happened if it's not the owner? So let's just pick any account uh, here, which is not the owner of this particular contract. It should throw an error because I only give it here. It can only have access by the owner, which means the owner is the message to sender. So if I click it, it will throw an error. If to give you the reason, give different reasons. The main reason is it's not the owner, we cannot access it. So, uh, so the, yesterday someone asked at the while if they compute the backend API to differentiate the user and the admin. This is all, also one option, you don't have to do that, but in order to differentiate the, which functions the admin has right to and which function has the user have to. So, whoever signed up on you, their MyTamask wallet to access your application, if they are not the owners, if they are not, uh, doesn't have the action or the admin, if you 
define it like this, they cannot access this function. They cannot add a person, or they cannot do any kind of transaction depending on how you define it. So I hope this is clear also. Let's just go back to the owner of this contract. Again, you can see the ripple and this is the, the same process. The data that I just added, I can see it like this. Even for viewing the person, I can define it by saying only the admin can see this data. Uh, right now, I didn't put on the owner for fetching the data, so anyone can access, see how much, uh, which person or how much data is found in the stock object. Anyone can do that. Okay, now let's just move on from this contract and let's just see the difference between public and external. Or first, let's just put this one. Confirm this functionality. Uh, if you remember, like I said, if it's a public, uh, on this function can be called here because it has a public uh, modifier. But if I change it to external and try to access this function here, the sol the re the, sol the remix by default throw you an error saying you cannot access this particular function because uh, it's modifier or its visibility is put as an external. This is what the difference between public and external. You cannot access function visible uh, declared as an external into another function. So if you want to do that, you have to make sure this modifier is public. This is the difference I want to show you here. Whereas, uh, let's say I want to put this function as an interval. Comment this out and say this uh, other person functionality is an internal function. What does that mean? It does not. So let's deploy it and see the difference. Just let's compile it here. If you remember, the purpose of internal is to make sure that function, if you put the internal visibility, it can only be seen inside the contract. No one can see it. You see, it? the add person functionality is removed. So you don't have, you usually don't give internal um, visibility for a function that you want to have a parameter for. Uh, this has to be self-executed function. We give them internal, where either they are called in another function and they automatically will be executed inside the contract. No one can access them. So this is the purpose of internal function. Okay, these are what else is there, view and pure, the other modifier that we see. Uh, so if for example, this is, uh, let's just remove this one and see the difference here also. Now, for example, here, if you see it, this is the state variable that I assigned, right? Uh, if you remember, view, can, what was the definition for view? View function do not modify state, but can read a state variable. Uh, pure doesn't read a state variable, nor modify a state variable, right? So if I just go back here and change this one, here I'm just reading the state variable, right? The people array by each person. But if I change it to pure, for example, the visibility, it will throw an error saying you cannot see the state variable or access uh, the state variable, which is true. Either if you, if you compile it, it will give you the suggestion to change it to view because only view can access state variable or read the state variable. It requires view. You're reading a state, so you have to change it to your visibility to view. It's just are different kind of decorators on your solidity to differentiate the purpose of the function for different purposes. So I hope modifiers are clear with this example. Now let's move on to what other point, the mapping. This is the other point I want to mention. 
marketing well, as I told you, it gives you the functionality. You are you getting used with normal database, with primary and for ranking uh, to connect between two tables and stuff like that. You can use mapping for that purpose. You will use it. You will likely to use it more often, even when you create a suite project. Uh, that mapping is like like the name. It will map one kind of uh, function with uh, or state variable with another state variable and make a connection. So here I'm just making there will be address user address which is connected with uh, this balance state variable. So if I put some address. If I put my address, it will display my balance. If I put some other address, it will be my, my balance. So uh, for mapping, I'm going to suggest you to try out to see the videos and also make sure you have uh, some references on it because uh, this is the simplest function. It can do, it can connect an address with a struct with an enum here, uh, and you can address, uh, see all the objects for my, of, all the object data I have, or also the struct data I have inside this contract and inside this blockchain, it can filter out for me by my address for every user. If that, if we have a lot of data under our name, we can just filter that using mapping by making sure the connection is happening between uh, this uh, kind of way. So I would recommend you also this one to do more research uh, to do to understand mapping really well. Uh, it can be very useful. Now let's just move on to ERC20 token. So considering you have again the basic understanding on solidity, we can see how you can use ERC token to build your so if you remember this is just a GitHub uh, solidity contract file that Yesterday, I showed you this one. Just copy the URL of the GitHub. All you have to do to access it will be just make sure you import like this. And uh, this one, just leave it as matter. So after you import your, uh, this is another honorable contract. Is another way to also make sure the admin also only had, like it, it's, it gives you the same functionality as the only owner modifier. So let's just move on. I'm not going to use it here. So uh, ERC20, I have imported it here. After you import it here and you give your contract a name, a name make sure you call the contract name of the ERC20 token. Uh, so if we go to the ERC20 token, the contract name is under ERC20. Here, this one. So the name is contract ERC20 and it, itself it uh, will inherit another functions the standard the ERC20 but that's not the, the point the point is we want to access all functionalities here to create our own token so you have to call this name the contract name of the ERC20 if it's different you have to make sure to change it also here so anyway the, the standard name for ERC contract is this one so put this one so by doing this, I'm inheriting, I'm inheriting all the functions of ERC20 in my contract, my current contract with our token. So every function ERC20 token has in this particular code will also be fetched in my contract, in my personal contract. So by doing this, you make sure you fetch ERC20 token. After that, I have put a modifier as owner. Uh, the same thing that I did, but on the constructor, you have to pass uh, the basic information about your token. That is uh, your token name, your contract name, and your token symbol. This is the uh, uh, symbol that I use for my coin, for my token. So I just got that. So uh, when the contract is deployed, automatically the symbol will be assigned RT. That we will see. The other thing that it, it's going to do would be here. We're gonna mint a contract a, a token. We're gonna assign a value here like this. I'm just here assigning 100 token. Uh, my total supply for this this currency that I'm gonna create named RT would be 100 token, and those 100 token are be are will be the ones that will be used interchangeably by my users in my application. 
uh, this is just transfer the contract transfer from one account to another account uh, by also declaring how much the amount. Uh, these two are the same, uh, these two functions here, this function and this function are give you the same functionality. The difference is uh, when you put addresses, this keyword, if you see addresses, it will there automatically access the contract address. So let's just do it first. the contract address which means this one address this fetch this particular address of your contract uh, but the message to sender like i told you fetch the owner of the one that defined the contract which means this address this is the difference so if you want the token to be distributed from your contract without involving the admin also you have to use this keyword uh, and you have to make sure your uh, contract also has some kind of value or ether value, stuff like that. Uh, but if you decide the admin to do the, the token transferring to the user or as a reward or something, you have to use this M message to send that. So to see the difference, let's just comment this out and see first from the contract how you can first compile this one. So if you see it here, there are a lot of functions that we haven't put it here that are displayed. Uh, these functions are displayed because we inherited every function that's found in ERC20. So if you go to the GitHub, you can find the other ones, the balance of the decimal functions in their, uh, to, in their GitHub or contract folder or ERC20 because you imported it like this, it will reach every functionality that's found on the ARC standard contract code so uh, the functional the functions that are added the mean token contract and the transfer token contract are also will be added here and here so uh, if i want to see first like i told you when we deploy the contract the contract i will make sure these values are assigned as my token information so if i click the symbol it will show you rt is my symbol of my token and if i click total supply there isn't any total supply because I haven't clicked this functionality. Either you can also put this particular assignation of your supply on your con uh, constructor uh, function. So every when it's deployed, you have your total supply token amount. So uh, to do that, I have to click this function, mint token contract. If I click total supply, I have this amount of token. Uh, technically here I have put 100, I want 100 decimal, but solidity by, by default doesn't understand decimals. So you have to multiply the 100 token by 10 to the power of 18 to change it to an ether value. So you have, you can just check that here. This uh, ether.com functionality uh, site uh, can tell you uh, how much this amount is. So uh, this one. If I, this is in way, there's a unit in way, it understands with this kind of variable to see how much ether that you have used here. This is, I want 100 ether token. Uh, it is equivalent, it's just a mathematics. This is equivalent with this, which uh, with GA, and it's probably in the power of 18 way. So uh, just how it's understand it, so make sure to add this one. If you want 100 token, put it like this. It is 100 token cell, just how so we can understand it is by in the power of 18 decimals. To understand decimals, it needs this uh, calculation. So read up on that, it's just how the solidity is created. Hopefully in the future, they will make sure uh, it understands decimals, float numbers. Uh, right now, it, you don't have that option, so you have to follow the rule of that language. So now we have defined the total supply for this currency, RT currency would be 100 token. Uh, if you want to transfer it from one account to another account, in this case, in this particular deployed function, the ones that have the option or the access to transfer the token would be the owner. 
and the owner in particular case, I have put it to be uh, the total supply is stored on the contract account, which means this address. So if I copy it and paste it here, and if I click balance, this total supply transfers to the contract address, this one. So every time a transfer is made from the contract to the users, a decrease will happen on the contract account. So let's just see transfer it to for to this user, for example. Let's go back here and make sure uh, this is a function transfer to open contract. Uh, yeah, sorry, this one. Let's say I want to transfer from my hundred token. Uh, maybe another 000 0.1 token by division so if you want to let's just say if you want to transfer 10 token you have to make sure in the power of 18 which means you have to write 18 zeros uh, to make sure from the 100 token you cannot transfer to the other one uh, just not to write all that i'm just gonna transfer a fraction of money to this particular account from the contract address. So if I click the address, and now if I see my contract balance, it has decreased by this number. So if I copy it and see how much ether I have lost, this is this is the left ether. Can I use? I I lost one nine here. Nine point nine nine ether is left because I transfer a function of ether to to this another user with this public address. So uh, and the same can be repeated if I want to be the the, the tokens to be under the owner the declare admin owner account instead of using the addresses. The only thing I have to use is message to sender. Message sender. This is the mint function, the transfer function are found in here, the function of the ERC20 token. So all you have to do is call the function, and when you call those functions, there's a parameter you have to fulfill. For example, if we see the underscore mint function here, this one, this is the function that I'm calling. I have to put an address and a value, how much value should be as a total supply, that is what I did here, the address and the total supply token account address. And so these functions, you are able to access it because you import the RC token like here. So I have to ask you, let's just last this, uh, see when the tokens are transferred from the contract owner instead of the contract itself. Uh, here, if you see, um, for example, here I said public. I didn't put only modifier uh, account uh, modifier here, which means any user can just mint its own token in my contract, which is not correct. It should have an only owner functionality. Only the owner or the contract, I mean, only the owner or the developer of the contract should have the access to create its own currency. Either way, it will be accessed by everyone. Everyone can create your RT token, uh, so you have to make sure define your visibility or your modifier on your functions. So uh, let's just need a token. This is the address. Um, let's just to copy the a message sender, which means the owner of the contract. You see the balance here. Now it has to have the hundred token value because of supply the RT, the owner. Is this address right? So if I want to transfer a value now to any other person again, the total token will be minimized from the owner since now I'm using a message. So if I put like this and now same value from the this. And if I click the balance, now it has to squeeze. Okay. This is a uh, much about solidity so i hope that's clear and if you have any questions i guess time to ask me that is it clear at least at least if you can
Okay, thank you. So, uh, should we? Uh, does this mean that you have no question? Everything is clear. Okay, Abdul Hamid, go ahead. So, Rahmat, I have a question regarding like mm -hmm. if I want to change a smart contract, like let's say I wrote a smart contract and deployed it, and I got the address. So, if somehow there was a bug inside the smart contract or there is a critical vulnerability that was discovered and the smart contract needed to be updated like how would that go wouldn't creating another smart contract be like creating another address so like how would we update the contents inside a smart contract yeah that's the point of uh, this is really interesting important in smart contract is that's why even the job market is not hiring juniors, only experience. Because one, like the everyone told you yesterday, once a smart contract is deployed, there is no way to change it. You have to create another contract with another address that doesn't have any connection with your first deployed contract. It, it, it's something you have to accept as a fact. You have to make sure you have made a detesting on your smart contract because there is no changing any issue if that happens, especially in Web3, everything is with money, every transaction uh, costs you a gas fee, an ether fee. So uh, when you have this critical condition, not only you have these unsatisfied users, you also lose a lot of money. So uh, with Web3, it's literally, literally it's a very careful uh, coding and just testing. The security is really hard in Web3, you have to make sure everything work before you deploy it on the mainnet so you have to do a really a deep dive testing on testnet on remix as much as you can because there is no turning back the only option you have you can uh, update state variables value that you, don't, you can't change functional that is without creating a new contract it's just the fact that you have it. okay thank you uh, not uh, hi. So my question hi. is, like the 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 ERC twenty token that you mentioned. Uh, like mm -hmm. it's also in the in the weekly challenge document. So this is the token that we are going to use for the rewarding system. Yes, this right? is. Yeah, this is uh, the one. This is the one. Just make, uh, try to make your symbol. Create your that is your own co contribute, uh, your own creation. You will have a multi currency or yes. currency on your for your application, and make sure that token is transferred to the employees as a reward, either from your contract okay. or for your uh, contract address as an admin. Okay. Okay. Uh, Alex, you can continue. Okay. Uh... Thank you. I am confused with the, the frameworks and the solid programming. So well, there are uh, four or five uh, frameworks. Yeah, okay, okay. the what frameworks. You shared yesterday. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the another is also the, the ID. Is it mandatory to use the Remix ID? No, I, I mean, the, you can. They have the same functionality. The are uh, the frameworks also give you the same kind of structure to create your contract with solidity. And when you okay. deploy them, you have to use a testnet account. And when you decide to put it in production, you have to use a mainnet account. But on Remix, you don't have to use this testnet or MetaMask accounts because, uh, for example, the Cipolia network on MetaMask. Only let you use, I think, 0 0.5 ether per day. You have to wait another day if you finish that many to test your application. The purpose of Remit, it gives you this uh, fa account with 100 ether. You have seen this, the ether is a lot of money here for testing. So you don't have to worry about uh, waiting another day or everything like that. You just have to test it here. There, there are different testing mechanisms, but with limitations. So Remix has more, uh, gives you more time and more. Uh, transaction manifest your account that when you go to hard hat 
again, they have the option to make sure you have a test account. Will you test your application without losing any real money? But those test uh, accounts that you will fetch from different sites has a limitation. Per day, either you, they give you zero point ETR. If that money has ended, you have to wait another 24 hours to get another testing test net account. Uh, I mean, test net money. So this is the difference, mainly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay I'm gonna share the slide in code for uh, Which ID? Okay, this one. There are a lot of fake IDs. Uh, this is their official ID. I'm just gonna. You this one. There are three default. Uh, I, I want you to not to forget that there are three default contracts when you run this Remix ID on your browser. So try to just remove the file that is found in them and just create your own contract. It's okay. It will uh, it will do the job. Creating a new file and folder is uh, I don't know. It's start stop working. What is in there? Oh, this also I want to show you to see the ether, the way in the ether converter also can be as helpful. Okay, any other question? Okay, uh, just give me confirmation to in this tutorial if everything is clear and we can wrap it up. Thank you. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, we can stop the recording. If you have any questions, reach out to me on the Slack. Have a good day. We will catch up on the afternoon.